one friend to Cape Kennedy. Chuck, come in. Yes, Walter, apparently, as we've been listening uh, to the tape, uh, the villain in this piece today was what they call a tail plug, which uh, uh, is an electrical connection between the Gemini Lawrence vehicle and the pad, which either prematurely disconnected or uh, was loose at the moment of ignition. And as a result, we've got a, uh, a four-day uh, delay again. Uh, out there on the pad uh, starting later on today once the erector is back up and the Astros are out and back down on the ground and set then the launch crews go back to work again on a 24 hour a day basis they've got to install new pre-valves and uh, they have to purge the tanks and go through the whole business of preparing the Gemini 6 booster rocket for a launch again we're told that uh, with the new target date of a of a Thursday uh, uh, launch uh, with the attempt of Sharon Stafford to again chase and rendezvous with Borman and Lovell aboard seven that we have two launch windows one running from 734 to 759 a.m. Eastern Standard Time the other from 849 to 936 Eastern Standard Time so they do have two windows to shoot at uh, Chuck Chuck? Yes. Uh, that was information I had here, too, of those launch windows, but did you just uh, overhear uh, the uh, mission control telling uh, Borman and uh, Lovell that the launch time would be 8.43 Eastern Standard Time on Thursday? I'm I don't sorry. understand this discrepancy myself. I'm sorry, Walter, neither do I, and we'll try and check it out and get back to you with it. Right. Uh, the, the, the figures that were released by the Civilian Space Agency for a Thursday launch were 734 to 759 and from uh, 849 to 936. Right, right. Here's an announcement from Jack King. Complex 19, another problem occurred in the area when a, one of the recovery helicopters, a part of the recovery forces that were airborne at the time at the Cape, a CH-3C helicopter with five persons aboard had a small engine fire and made an emergency landing in the Banana River. No one was injured. Two of the recovery larks, those are the large mobile vehicles that are used as part of the recovery forces, have gone to the scene. It's in the vicinity of launch pad 37 at Cape Kennedy and are in the process of recovering the pilots and the personnel aboard at the present time. Once again, no one injured. It was a CH-3C helicopter. It encountered a small fire in one of its engines, made an emergency landing in the river. Back at Complex 19, we understand that an inspection crew is on its way to the launch pad to make a quick inspection in an attempt to confirm what our data, both in the blockhouse and at Mission Control Center, showed concerning our problem at the pad. This is Gemini Launch Control. It's impossible to uh, simply uh, uh, start one of these engines again and launch Gemini 6 a little bit later today because of the, uh, the fact that a maximum fuel load is required and uh, a portion of that fuel was used in that one and six tenths seconds that the engines fired. Recounting again what happened this morning at precisely the right second, even as Gemini 7 got off on the right second, the engines ignited at 9.54 uh, this morning. At precisely that second, everything seemed to be going well. The engines fired up, and uh, the vehicle was being held on the pad for the three seconds while power built up, which is normal. But just halfway toward that three seconds, after one and six tenths seconds of the engines firing, the engines shut down. Uh, they shut down automatically, an automatic sequencer. Uh, turned them off so that the uh, Gemini 6 could not be launched. There were some hair-raising moments. This has never happened in our manned space program before, although the contingency had been planned for and rehearsed many times. Uh, Shaw and Stafford uh, stood by, ready to pull those large D-rings uh, on the underside of the, uh, their cockpit seats, which would eject them from the spacecraft, even as it stood on the pad, if that uh, fuel seemed to be getting away from the engines and uh, threatening an explosion on the pad. They were ready to go if they had to, but that was not necessary. And meanwhile, these two calm, skilled test pilots read out the figures on the board with no excitement whatsoever in their voices, as you heard in those tapes a few moments ago. It has been determined uh, in a preliminary survey that a tail plug 
the game loose or disconnected, a rather simple matter to repair, but now the bird has to be refueled again, as you heard uh, Chuck Van Fremd explain uh, a few moments ago, and checked out again, so it will be Thursday before apparently it can be launched. Although everything in uh, manned space these days is on a real-time basis, they can make spontaneous decisions, they could conceivably get things turned around maybe even a little bit before that. But at any rate, at the moment, they're talking about a Thursday morning launch. The exact time is in some uh, question, however. Let's see if Nelson Benton in Houston can tell us. Nelson? And the 8.43 time, 8.43 a.m. Eastern time, is the uh, start of the desirable window on Thursday. The earlier time was uh, an, an approximation, uh, perhaps, and this is speculation that uh, we weren't really considering having to wait that long to launch. I think it should be said we should hark back to something that the mission director, William Snyder, said a few days ago. The object of this flight is not to get off on the eighth day or the ninth day or the tenth day. The real object is rendezvous and I think we can say that that's uh, still a distinct uh, possibility, uh, we hope a probability. Waller? It also should be pointed out that uh, the Gemini 6 uh, rendezvous with Gemini 7 was a flight unto itself. Meanwhile, Gemini 7 is doing perfectly, and uh, that flight uh, is uh, proving out everything they had hoped to prove out so far. It is in its uh, eighth day, and in another uh, couple of hours, three hours, I think, exactly, it will pass the record Cooper and Conrad flight of 190 hours. The Gemini uh, uh, 7 is now in its 118th orbit of the Earth. Wally Shira, this 42-year-old Annapolis graduate and test pilot, a man whose father was a barnstorming pilot after a distinguished World War I flying record, uh, well, Shira was just as cool and as collected in that uh, Gemini spacecraft uh, facing dire emergency this morning as any man could possibly be. And in that uh, first exchange of messages, just as soon as they had read out all the figures and uh, they'd been given all, they'd been uh, giving all the information to the blockhouse, a good test pilot does that, even if his ship is crashing uh, about him, uh, he reads out all the figures so that uh, the next man will know what happened at any rate. Shira was doing his job right down to the moment when it looked uh, like everything was finally safe. Here is a picture of that uh, engine again. Those uh, two thrust chambers of the uh, Titan engine, uh, Aerojet engines, which developed some 430,000 pounds of thrust. They're still looking them over, deciding when it'll be safe to put the erector back up and bring uh, Shira and Stafford back to the ground. But Shira, just as soon as they were able to exchange a little bit of banter, and they didn't have to read out those engines anymore, uh, those uh, monitoring devices uh, in the cockpit said, well, those things happen. It could happen to anyone. Uh, no one was hurt. And then he uh, said that they wanted to keep on trying, That uh, and he had a kind word for the boys on the ground at the moment when he must have been uh, feeling the utmost disappointment. Uh, he gave them a little pat on the back and said, you did your best. Uh, and then he assured them that Shira and Stafford still want to go in pursuit of Germany 7. They were disappointed on October 25th when they got within 40 minutes of launch and uh, learned that the Agena target vehicle they were going to be pursuing on that mission had blown up before going into orbit. Today, the Gemini 7 target vehicle, which identified itself uh, over Bermuda a little later on, over the Azores, as it uh, passed over the Cape. And the amazing thing was that Borman and Lovell from Gemini Six, uh, clearing the way for the erector to go up again and to get uh, Shira and Stafford out and also beginning to assess whatever damage might have been done by that uh, one and a half second firing of the engines as to what is going to be required to get this bird ready to go by Thursday morning. As von Bram has told us from the Cape, uh, a lot of normal things have to be done even if there's nothing to be repaired. 
uh, the purging of the tanks, that is the emptying of all the fuel, and then the refilling of those tanks, uh, the checkout of the uh, various electronic components, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, a full, <coughs> full recount of the uh, vehicle getting ready for a Thursday morning launch, which we're told will come at 8.43 a.m. These launch windows, you know, uh, uh, they call them windows. That's the small time span uh, during the 24 hours when a launch from uh, pad 19 uh, can put uh, a, a spacecraft into a uh, close enough position to still catch up with uh, its mate up there in the sky. CBS News coverage of Gemini 7, two weeks in space, will continue in a moment after station identification. This is CBS. Project Gemini, two weeks in space. Again from the CBS News Space Center in New York, Walter Cronkite. We said when we came on the air about an hour and 40 minutes ago that this was destined to be one of the dramatic days in space. It has turned out to be one of the dramatic days on the ground at Cape Kennedy. For the first time in our manned space program, engines were ignited and shut down before the spacecraft took off from the pad. This happened uh, just about an hour and 45 minutes ago, or rather 45 minutes ago, excuse me, at 9.54, uh, right at the second when Gemini 6 was scheduled to blast off to pursue uh, in a 103,000 mile chase, 17,500 miles an hour, Gemini 7 through the skies and achieve a rendezvous at 185 miles high. At that moment at 9.54, the engines ignited as planned, the countdown had been perfect, but one and six tenths seconds after those engines ignited, they shut down automatically. A safety device built into the, uh, the spacecraft, uh, into the booster, had uh, shut the engines down because there was something wrong that would have jeopardized the flight in its powered phase in the first six minutes before the spacecraft went into orbit. We'd never had such a shutdown before, and it was a critically dangerous moment. They Astronauts had drilled for the moment. They were prepared. They were, we can assume, uh, while they read out the figures in such calm voices, it's unbelievable to the ground as to what was happening to their engines. They were, we can assume, uh, grabbing that large orange ring under their seats, which if they had pulled them, would have ejected them from the uh, spacecraft right there at the pad, thrown them some 150, 200 feet high, they'd come down by parachutes, although it would have been a uh, first for uh, uh, that kind of a pad abort. Instead, they were able to stay aboard the spacecraft to read out those figures. The engines uh, were drained and still are being drained of their uh, critically dangerous fuel uh, so that the erector now can be put back up and Wally Shira and Tom Stafford can be brought safely back to Earth. The mission has been scrubbed for today and for the next three days, apparently. A target time has been set for 8.43 a.m. on Thursday morning for Gemini 6 to be turned around and to go. It is believed that the cause of the shutdown was a loose tail pipe, a tail plug, that is, uh, in the, uh, at the bottom of the booster, uh, which was signaled to the automatic sequencer. It said something's wrong, and the automatic sequencer shut down the engines. 
If that uh, is all that is the matter, uh, it is a simple matter to correct, of course, to just to be sure that that pipe is on a little tighter the uh, next time. But uh, as we've been told by Chuck Van Fremd at the Cape, there are a lot of procedures now to get Gemini 6 ready again. All of this uh, set of fuel has to be drained. Uh, the tanks have to be refueled. The electronic equipment has to be uh, rechecked out.